Hey, my name's Jazz, and I'm going to take you through the three R's of resilience. Now, resilience isn't about putting up and shutting up or just keeping a stiff upper lip. It's the time between you being on the floor with overwhelm and being able to bounce back and reframe and have a different way of looking at things. So let's get cracking. The first R of resilience is responsibility. Now, this is really important because the idea with this is that you make an intentional choice, a decision to take responsibility for what you can control and only what you can control. You are not gonna concern yourself or waste energy and time worrying about stuff that you have no control over. This is critical, because if you look at the things that kind of consume you, a lot of them, you can't do anything about changing. What you can control is how you show up. So you only take responsibility for what you can control. That's where you direct all of your focus and energy. The second R is reach out. And this really has two kind of meanings to it. The first meaning is that you, you ask for help. I mean, there's nothing cool about struggling. And there's so many, so many of us struggle to actually ask for help because our internal narrative is, I should be able to do this myself. And if I ask for help, people will think I'm not good enough and judge me. And so we're all kind of locked in this, oh, I must do better, I'm not good enough. <laughs> Rather than just saying, hey, I'd like to make a request because I'm struggling with this and I would like to do it well. So can you help me? which actually makes more sense. But when we get caught up in the moment, there's all sorts of comparisons that come in. Like we look on social media and compare our backstage with everyone else's shiny, sparkly front stage and feel inadequate. And that's where imposter syndrome can get in and that stops you from asking for help. So reaching out is really important. A lot of people say, well, who do I ask? Where do I go? Listen, it's like, it's like boyfriends. You've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find a prince. But asking someone and it not working is not a reason for never asking anyone for help again. So keep reaching out. The second point of reaching out is um, imagining things beyond your garden of possibility. If you link your arms in a circle, everything in there is your perception of what's possible and then look up and look around and what you see is there's an entire universe outside what you believe is possible. <laughs> also, that is full of possibility as well. So when it comes to reaching out, I'm talking about going beyond what you believe is possible, beyond what you believe you deserve, actually, because we only achieve as much as we believe we deserve. So going beyond, stretching that out, getting out of c comfort into complexity, get stra gr really grappling with some questions around, so what if what if I wasn't restricted by this? What if I could do anything I wanted? What if I was calling the shots on my own life? Because <laughs> you kind of are. The third R, and this is really big, of all the R's, this is the most important R, is the ability to reframe. Now, when I talk about reframing, I mean the difference between looking at a situation and only seeing the negatives and restrictions and constraints and looking at the same situation, acknowledging that it is looks like, yep, yeah, that's going to be hard, but also saying, and I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if anyone's done it before, but this situation cannot remain the same. So I am going to try thinking about it, doing something that's different. Reframing is your ability um, to, to look at something that has flawed you and say, OK, I'm going to get up again because the success is just a failure who fell down and got back up again and again and again. Reframing really comes into resilience because it's about reinvention. It's about being able to say, okay, so that didn't work, but rather than let that define me, rather than then be someone who can't do that, I'm going to look at it and go, right, that didn't work the first time, possibly because of this and this, reach out, find some advice on that. So next time I go, this is what it's gonna look like. There's a little phrase that can help you with reframing. Rather than saying, oh, I can't do whatever, say, up until now, I've struggled with that. From now on, I'm going to, it just changing the language has a huge effect on reframing. These three R's are kind of looking at um, measuring resilience and they've been, they've been noticed in people who've been through adverse childhood experiences or huge trauma, but still seem to have this ability to pick themselves up and keep going. These are the steps and secrets that you need to work on if you want to take your resilience to the max. Why would you do that? Because when you are more resilient, you can lead better and influence others, which means that your impact is greater. And that's whether you're a leader in a multi-level organisation, whether you lead a team, whether you lead a family, or whether you lead yourself. This is critical to you levelling up. If that was useful, I've got lots of other excellent resources. Please head on down to my VIP library down here. It's a free bank of resources where you can go and get lots of things that are going to kind of give you thoughts, give you thought provoking resources to get you thinking a little bit outside of what you believe is possible because you are more powerful than you think you are.